everyone. Welcome back to episode 23 of Talk of Fame podcast. I'm Kylie, and today we have on actor, writer, and host of the Art of Kindness podcast, Robert Peter Paul. Thanks so much for coming on, Robert. It's a pleasure speaking with you. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to talk to you today. Of course. I'm so excited to talk to you. So over the last year, we've been kind of stuck in isolation. So what is something that you did over the last day that you wouldn't have really time to do before? Yeah, I know. It's been a crazy time, right? Yeah, I think right? in a lot of ways, yeah, you know, and, and it sounds like you're like me where you try to find the positive in these crazy situations. And yeah, so, 100%. Yeah, so something that was positive that came out of this crazy time was being able to spend more time with your loved ones, you know, since everybody's yeah. at home. It was a little crazy to be working from home with my fiance, who's a teacher, and she was trying to teach from our living room, and I, I would try <laughs> to walk by and sneak and get coffee or go to the bathroom. So there were some crazy things, but I think to answer your question, my podcast that I started was something that I definitely wouldn't have done had it not been a lockdown because as an actor, you know, I was getting some remote work. So I had done a couple podcasts for people like radio shows or different interviews. And I started to think to myself, oh, this would be really fun to start a podcast. And of course, all the news was so negative. So I wanted to put out something positive and the art of kindness was born. And it's really been great because people are more open to Zoom and virtual interviews now. So I've been able to talk with a lot of cool people. Oh, absolutely. I'm in the same exact way. Like I started my podcast over quarantine like you did. And it's like the same kind of thing that like you have like for your podcast is like bring kind of start world these are like the news outlets that are like kind of so negative over the last year that it's like we should bring out some positive outlooks in the industry and like People always mention to me before quarantine, oh, you'd be perfect at podcasting or in journalism because I have, I come from two journalists in my family. So I'm like, I kind of, oh, wow. things from there. And so like, people be like, that's perfect for you. You know everything about what's happening in industry and sports and all that. I'm like, oh, whatever. Okay. Then it didn't hit me until like beginning of quarantine dash, I should actually start this. So I'm like, as <laughs> if I actually start this or what should I do myself to keep myself busy? Because I'm a very kind of busy person. But once COVID hit, I'm like, what am I going to do yeah. with my life right now? I can't go see family. I can't do things I used to do. So I'm like, what am I going to do with myself? Like, how am I supposed to keep myself busy? And now we're doing this. So it basically all started from there. And for me, now I'm on the 23rd episode, starting in April of this year, so now we're just, just still going with this now. Wow, that's so funny. I'm on the, I think I'm on the 23rd episode too. So we really probably did start around the same time. And yeah, I think probably. it's cool that you started it. it oh, it's thank like, you. Some people can't keep themselves busy and be creative. So you should be proud of yourself. Yeah, exactly. Like what is like your favorite kind of guest that you had on your podcast so far? Ooh. It's a good question. That's a hard question because I, I genuinely have had such wonderful guests and I've really enjoyed every single person. Yeah. I think for me, sometimes the interviews you don't expect have been the most popular ones that people have, have really loved. Mm -hmm. But of course, it was cool to have Megan Trainer. She has been on twice now, mm -hmm. which was kind of an honor. I, I couldn't believe that she said yes to coming back. And, you know, when someone's more, I'm sure you know, more famous, quote unquote, you, you get less time with them. So those were always a challenge because I would get maybe 15 minutes with some of the bigger people and, and trying to figure out how to squeeze in all my questions. But I don't know if I can choose one favorite. I think I, I've loved them all for different reasons. And we have a lot of really cool guests coming up. And I just appreciate how everybody's so open and willing to talk about kindness. But I, I love when we get kind of off track and I just throw in my questions and we, it feels more like a natural conversation. Those are the ones that I really love. Oh my, I'm in the exact same way. I'm, sometimes I talk, I'm like, I don't care. I squeeze in the question. The most important thing is that kind of like the conversation because, you know, sometimes people don't have this opportunity or this is something you really wanted to do. So I'm like, yeah, this is kind of something like you, I want to do and Megan Trainer, she was basically my childhood, basically. Like she's a big, Oh yeah. Like she was like basically my whole childhood, my favorite singer growing up. Like she's amazing. Like I couldn't endure her anymore. Like she's this amazing person in general. 
Oh, me too. And she's so down to earth and kind. And I think the second time I talked to her, you know, I could hear her dog running around and her baby. And she, I believe, has moved in with her whole family. You know, she's successful enough where she can afford, I guess, a really big house because she's living with her whole family, which I think is really cool. And I, I've loved getting to talk with her. She's a really special person. And of course, we all love her music. So mm -hmm. I was actually was listening surreal. to her music this morning in general, actually. I was just listening this morning. Oh, yeah. So like any time I What's got, your favorite? <laughs> um uh Dear Future Husband is probably my favorite. Oh yeah, that's a good one. China? Or you yeah, basically everything. What'd you say? Like, do you have a, like a favorite song by Megan China or you just like like any of her songs? I got distracted because my, my ring light broke. So I always try to have a light on so people can see me, but it's like <laughs> it's like hanging down. It's probably fine. If you hear a crashing noise, that's what it is. Um, yeah, I, I love her music and my fiance is a huge fan of hers and she loves all of her songs. So she's always playing them when we go for drives in the car. But of course, you know, All About That Bass is an iconic song. Yeah, yeah. She has a great Christmas album that's out and... Um, She's just, yeah, such a, such a powerhouse. So I'm excited to see what she's doing next because I think she has a sitcom that's going to come out about her life and oh, no some way. other... Oh, no, I never knew that. Yeah, some cool I projects coming Did she, out like, post there. anything about it? Like, like, post anything about sitcom or anything? Or she has much, I don't... like, interviews or whatever? Yeah, so I, I do as much research as I can, and I always recommend, you know, there's a lot of trade magazines that I didn't necessarily read before I started in entertainment news, like, you know, Variety and Deadline, and you can get the updates. And they always post when someone buys a show or when they make a deal or when a script is sold. So they kind of post things early on. So that, that yeah. was one of those news that came out in, in that vein because she signed an overall deal with NBC, I think. But nothing's been, you know, official yet. So I did ask her about it on, on my episode. And she was kind of, you know, mum about it because there's not much to say yet, but it sounds like it's going to happen. So I would love to see that. Yeah, I would love to see that. Like, did you, like, did you write for Variety? Or, like, I saw something, like, you, like, wrote for Variety or some, like, type of big news website thing? Oh, yeah. So I've been an entertainment writer for a while now. I always felt like, as an actor, you need a day job, right? Yeah. But I think <laughs> if you can have a day job in the industry when you're starting out, it'll just help you. So I've always felt like, okay, if I can do something with writing, which I also love, that's sort of in entertainment, at least I'll be maybe meeting people that are like-minded and, and love storytelling. So I've written for a lot of magazines over the years, like Ola, I've worked for Access Hollywood, um, America's Got Talent, I've written for, not Variety, but now I write for Screen Rant, which is an awesome movie TV news website and backstage a bunch of just random stuff there's a there's a long list but it's it's always really cool because i'm sure your parents know as journalists every yeah. site and publication has different formats so it's always interesting to learn people's sort of formulas for how they put articles together and it's it's fun it's a fun thing to write about yeah 100 percent. like how did you like get into like writing in the first place well, I've always written since I was a child. I would make up little stories and comic books. So I was always a writer at heart, I think. And then I'm trying to think of what my first my first article that got published was. In college and in high school, I always did the newspaper. So that's a really great way to start just at your yeah. local paper or if your high school or, or whatever has one. That was a really, a really good uh, foot in the door for me. But you start to learn that Sometimes they want writers that have the experience, so they're not necessarily a writer. But for instance, I write for Backstage as an expert, quote unquote, because mm -hmm. I used to produce acting workshops and I am an actor. And so they want people that have that experience, if that makes sense. Yeah. So there's a lot of different, you know, there's a lot of different ways into it. But, you know, like what you're doing now with, with the podcast, just creating and constantly, I would say writing every day helps you hone your craft and then also gives you something to show people when you go on interviews and apply for writing jobs because the writing jobs are hard to get to but mm -hmm. if you have samples to show and, and you're ready to go for when that opportunity opens up you know you'll be all the better better for it oh 100 like i basically do interviews like a couple of times a week so i'm basically writing a couple bunch of questions every day so it makes you like when you're writing questions it basically makes you get better at what you do like figure out better 
figure out questions, writing, or just in general, it's like makes you a little better minded, I guess, like figure out what to yeah. do, be better at kind of what you do outside. Yeah, it keeps your brain sharp, hopefully. What's the hardest part for me is editing my podcast or even when oh, I've had to same. edit interviews for other sites. Because, I, you know, we, none of us like to listen to the sound of our voices, I don't think. Yeah, I'm the same so exact way. I just hard. hate listening to my voice in interviews. I'm like, I don't want to listen to this right now. I'm very self-confident. Oh. Well, you, well, you have a very nice voice. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Too. Like, I think, like, it's like when you're listening to your voice, you're like, um, I don't feel like you listening to my voice right now. Can someone else edit this for me? I guess at the beginning or at the end, and then they edit in the <laughs> This is very I kind know, of subconscious I... listening on video, but you don't care when you're talking. It's like, I just hate listening to myself doing video. I'm just like, no, I can't do it. I can't listen. I know. Now I'm like listening to myself talk. I'm like, ah, but I, I do think none of us actually hear what our voices actually sound like. It sounds different to people. So there's no use in worrying about it. And that's something you learn when you're editing early on. You just got to get over it. Originally, when I started, I was thinking, oh, I'm going to edit out every single time I say like or um. But now I've just let it go because this is just how people talk. It's a natural way to communicate. And I think that once you start to really listen to yourself and, and the way you do interviews, you do start to learn, you know? I feel like my mm -hmm. questions have gotten better. I've been able to read people better the more I interview people over the years. So it is a skill that definitely takes practice, but the listening pays off, even though it can be painful. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So like, as we're talking talking a little bit about like podcasting, doing a podcast or whatever, like, what is the goal that you have for your podcast that like, you want to achieve in the future or this, or the next couple of months? That's a great question. My ultimate goal with every episode is to make people smile and to bring them something positive to their day. So I usually like to release episodes Monday mornings because I feel like Monday has a bad reputation. People are so <laughs> mad at Mondays and they never want to yeah. get up and go to work. So I want to put out something positive people can listen to on their commute or while they're walking on their lunch break. So that's, I think, my immediate goal with every episode, as well as to provide kindness tips that people can carry on and implement into their day to try and make the world a little bit happier. But overall, I just, I think I would like to reach as many people as possible. My dream guest is Dolly Parton. Fingers crossed. Yeah, she's a, <laughs> Dolly Parton's a star for sure. 100%. Yes. I don't know if I'll ever get her, but that that's one of my dream goals that I, I had written down when I first started the podcast. I wrote down people that I thought I could probably get based on different publicist connections I've made over the years and then people that were like a dream that you know maybe one day down the line so yeah that, that's something that comes to mind yeah like how do you usually like get your people on your podcast like how do you usually get kind of like big stars on like Patrick Dempsey Hugh Jackman all Do Dolly Parton like Blake Shaw and all those like big type of people yeah you know it really depends so for instance, with Megan Trainer, she was promoting something and a publicist I was connected to had sent me a pitch, which is basically an email with all the details of the new product or the event and who's promoting it and the interview times they have available. So that's one of the ways I've been getting those kind of people is just through the connections I've made over the years, which is something I would definitely advise people to do when, when they're starting out is you, you want to maintain a strong relationship with publicists especially, because they're kind of the gatekeeper to the stars and the people you want to interview. But it's really been different. You know, some people I personally know that have come on the podcast, some people I've just creepily sent a DM to, and I you tell them about the show and what I'm trying to do, and it it works out. So I feel like you, you really get in there and figure out the best way for each person. But what helps the most is just telling them what your show is about and who you are. I think sometimes when we're reaching out to people for interviews, you're, it's a tend tendency to just say, I need you for this. But if mm -hmm. you can come from a personal place and, you know, show them that you're a human, you're not trying to get something from them because, you know, especially like the people you named, Hugh Jackman, all these really big people, mm -hmm. they get asked for something like a hundred times a day at, yeah. the, at the least, you know? And they already have all these deals and they have to have a life too. So they can't say yes to everything. And the people mm -hmm. asking them all have amazing stories and 
things that they've gone through, but it's just really impossible to say yes, which is why they have publicists and managers in the first place. So, you know, it's, you just got to keep trying, but as you get different people, then you're able to, you know, like now I can, I can tell different publicists when I pitch, I've had this person on and this person. And so it just, it starts to build uh, each episode, I would say, and yeah. it, it, it helps. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. Like, I usually reach out to people on Instagram, which I, like, find you on Instagram for your podcast or whatever. And I sometimes feel weird. I'm like, uh, I don't want to seem creepy. I don't want to seem <laughs> weird that you're reaching out on Instagram. But, like, Hugh Jackman and Patrick Dempsey, Gina Davis. Um, oh, Gina Davis. Love her. Oh, I adore her. I can, I can go on for hours about her. She's the reason why I do this. Like, she's yeah. so... Like, she, I wouldn't have done this if it wasn't for her. Like, she's really my hero. And the reason why I'm here, basically, is i gone through anxiety, depression ever since I was a baby. Hmm. I got through a disorder, anxiety disorder, and got on meds, and she helped me get through that with her inspirations and her movies and all that. So she got me through all of that. And it was a really big patch in my life. It was rough, so I'm like, like if I, she was really the person that got me through that, and Hugh Jackman especially, both of them got me through it. And like it's my biggest, yeah. Um, Gina and Hugh want my biggest goal, especially. Uh oh, I've been like reaching. Yeah. A couple every couple of weeks, <laughs> how to get Hugh and Gina on? Like oh, busy. I'm like, are you kidding me? <laughs> I keep reaching out. Wow. He's like, yeah, those two are. Like, those two were, like, my main goal. And Patrick Dempsey, too, or Ellen Pompeo, either one. Like, mm. I have to have them on. It's yeah. You will. You will. You will have them. I, I can I can feel it when the time is right. You know, I'm sorry that you went through anxiety and, and depression and um, the disorder that you mentioned. That's really hard. But, you know, you're stronger for it. And you're here now. And, uh, I mean, basically all of us, I would say, deal with some form of anxiety. And it's... You know, it's really crippling, especially in the arts and as an actor, they don't teach you how to deal with your mindset. I think now more stuff is coming out and people are talking about it. But that's another thing we, we try to address on the podcast, too, because it's hard. It's just hard to be a person, you know, so yeah. having idols like that is really important. And I know I work with an organization called Women in Entertainment. Oh, yeah, and... I love that organization. It's one of my favorite organizations. Yes. Oh, wow. Yeah, they're, they're incredible. And, you know, they're directly partnered with and, and know Gina Davis. And we see firsthand the work that she's doing and mm -hmm. have done events with her. And yeah, she's an incredible idol to have. Um, and I do have a Hugh Jackman story, actually, a, a really tiny oh, yeah. one. It's not long. But he came in, I forget what he was promoting. I used to intern at Access Hollywood. And as an intern, I would sit at the front desk and greet people and just kind of get the celebrities whatever they needed you know i got snooki a diet coke and one time i had to run and get beyonce a cupcake so there was a lot of like really fun crazy things that happened but hugh jackman came in and what i remember about him is just you know he's a, a big guy and he's so famous and recognizable but mm -hmm. he came in with his i think publicist or somebody and he walked right over the desk he shook my hand and looked me in the eye and he said what's your name hi i'm hugh and I was like, oh, wow, hi, I'm Robert. And then, you know, he did his interview. And on the way out, he stopped and turned around, shook my hand. And he said, it was so nice to meet you, Robert. And just the fact that he remembered my name and even asked for it in the first place really stuck with me. So he has a great reputation. And, you know, my experience with him was really positive. So he's also another awesome idol, I think. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, I went to see him in concert when he went on the Man to Meet at the show, like the show when he went on tour two years ago. I went to see him in, on a Philadelphia tour like when he went to Philly, Philadelphia because I lived like two hours away from Philadelphia because I'm from Pennsylvania. So I went down. Oh, cool. I came from The Greatest Showman, so I was kind of like a fan of him because I'm obsessed with The Greatest Showman. And so, like, when I went to yeah, it's a good movie. Tour with my mother, and I was, like, blown away. He was such a very nice, funny, kind human. That is, I, I didn't even want to leave. And my mom asked me after, and she's like, how? It was my first concert, actually. So it was my very first concert. And so, wow. she, how was it for you? And, she, and I was like, it was awesome. I loved it. I'm <laughs> obsessed with him ever ever since. And he's the reason why I'm always so kind, uh, sweet to people, 
And he's the reason why I done I love dance. Like he made me want to start dance. Like so I started dance out. Wow. And so like you always ask me like why do you love him so much? I'm like that's the reason. He's sweet, kind. He's like known as like one of the nicest people in Hollywood. So that's the reason why like I like him so much. Not because he like. Like his personality or his looks. It's about like his kind of personality is like the most important thing to me. That's kind of like what stood out to me the mm. most. And people are always like, when you meet him, tell him to come on the podcast. I'm like, um, I don't want to put that on him. Like he's such a very celebrity <laughs> and like like Jennifer Lopez and all of those people with that. I just don't want to put it on him. Like, yeah, yeah. that's for me. Okay. <laughs> you have to do that. And so yeah. I mean the be huge Gina and I'm planning on going to a Gina event for her institute next year if she if they're in person, they're in virtual right now, but I'm hoping I can go to an event to see her in person. Yeah. Meet her. But I'm seeing her next year though in February when she goes to South Carolina. But Oh, but that's awesome. Year though, but so I'm praying it actually happens. So but Yeah, I hope so. Yeah, it's awesome. You know, it's hard when with all these virtual events and stuff like that. So you never know. <laughs> but I think the yeah. in-person are coming back. Yeah, sooner or later, like, like everything's starting to open up. So hopefully those events kind of start opening up. I know women in entertainment are starting to open things up in New York and stuff. I see. Yeah, we have an event in New York coming up, actually. Oh, yeah. I think it's like December or something. That's awesome. Yeah, it's December 6th. Mon it's a Monday, December 6th, I believe. And it's a Broadway-style event, so we have a lot of cool, oh, yeah. cool yet-to-be-announced people coming. And it's it's just another great way to empower people and inspire people and give them knowledge, you know, people just starting out, especially in the entertainment industry. And, of course, specifically women, providing them resources. So it's a really special organization, and I mm. love working for them. You know, it's... It's just amazing to be working towards that goal because it's so important and yeah. they do they do a lot of great work. Yeah, they really do. Like I, I love that organization. Like they're it's amazing at what they do. But um like you're not Aww. you're not only like a podcast host, but you're an actor that you said mentioned before, but what made you want to become an actor in the first place? You know, I, my mom says that I was singing and dancing right when I came out of the womb. <laughs> so I think I was just born with the desire to perform and I would put on shows in my living room and make pretend tickets and charge my family and they'd probably roll their eyes and be like, oh my gosh, we got to sit down and watch this kid do whatever for a couple hours now. So I was always, you know, performing and making videos and I started acting professionally when I was a kid. I, I think it was a lot easier as a kid in many ways because I didn't have all this knowledge about the business and I just wanted to have fun and do what I loved. So looking <laughs> back now, I'm trying to get back to that. But you know, I would just show up and want to perform and I did a, a tour and then an off-Broadway show and then I was cast in a Broadway show, which was really cool. I never got to go on because the show closed <laughs> before I could. But I think at a young age, I, I really just followed what I loved and my bliss. That's what my grandma always says, follow your bliss. Mm -hmm. And it's something that becomes harder to do when you're older because the world shouts at you to get a real job and that you can't do this and can't do that. But I think, why not? Why can't we do what we want to do, you know? So everybody should yeah. follow what they love and definitely learn as much information as you can, but don't let it blind you and make you stressed out because that happened to me for a while where I'd be filming a TV film audition and thinking to myself, oh, don't move your face as much, like stop being so theatrical. And I would get so in my head just yeah. as one example. So I think, yeah, it's interesting to look back on why I, I wanted to be an actor in the first place because it was so genuine and pure and it still is. And it's just yeah, trying to make sure I stay in that zone. <laughs> yeah, 100%. But um, as like we were talking about kind of being an industry and actor, you founded um, Robert Peter Paul Productions if I'm wrong, but um, what does your company do for people in the industry or why did you like start it? I did, yeah. So I founded that in 2015 and I basically saw a need for actors in New York City because there's these different events you can go to where you meet a director or a casting director 
and I just found them to be very stuffy and too formal. And I could tell some people were there to maybe just cash a check and they weren't actually trying to build a relationship with an actor or teach them. So I formed my production company to start producing these events for actors in the city. I would have, you know, a casting director or someone come in to teach a small group of actors and I would make it really casual. So I would always play music and I'm a goofball. So I would run around and just make sure everybody was comfortable. And we would do, you know, just for example, a winter event with hot chocolate and a casting director or whatever. And I tried to make it just very accessible to actors so they could feel comfortable and learn and, you know, perform a monologue or a song and then get feedback and work on it with this, with this teacher. So that was the initial inception of my company. Now those, I did that for a while, but those kind of events, I think there was a lawsuit in LA where people were paying to attend these workshops. And the oh, casting yeah. director was basically, yeah, they were promising they would cast them. So it's become a whole pay to play thing, which was what I was trying to avoid. I was trying to like deconstruct that and, and make it a little bit more genuine and worthwhile. So yeah. I, I decided to step away from doing those for, for uh, various reasons, because I was just trying to, you know, help my actor friends. And then I basically pivoted and I turned the company into a marketing company and writing company. So that's been one of my day jobs is that I've had different social media clients and, you know, they're all within the entertainment industry. Women in entertainment is one of them. And so I'll design pages for people and do ads and all that kind of stuff. You know, when the acting work is slow, it's a nice thing to have. And I use it to produce my podcast too, because it's important, I think, to have an LLC or, or a company just, you know, from a legal standpoint, I guess. Yeah, well, under Brisa, I agree with that. But like you were on like a film called What Happened Last Night. Like, do, and what was that kind of experience like for you to kind of experience that role? Yeah, I think that was maybe my first indie film that I did. And that was really exciting. I remember when I got the call, the filmmaker who's this really awesome creative lady candace kane she's pumping out movies left and right she basically started her own whole production company and is trying to start her own studio but i had sent in a self-tape i remember i filmed it in my fiance's dorm room for one of the roles and i never heard back you know and that happens all the time you just never hear back yeah and then in the back of my head it's always like you never know so months later mm -hmm got an email from her saying, you know, we really loved your audition. And I was like, oh, this is so nice. She's just letting me know that I didn't get the part, but they liked it. And then she said, I ended up writing you a part because you really stuck with me. So that was really exciting to hear and flattering. And eventually we filmed the movie. I believe it was, it might've been like one of her first bigger films. I don't, I don't want to say that if it's not true, but mm -hmm. that was definitely a learning experience because the first scene I was in was a huge party scene. And I think I was playing Flip Cup, which is a drinking game with, um, it was Amber Rose, who was really like famous. She's still famous, but she was in the news a lot at the time. And, you know, we had a couple recognizable people in the movie. So when I saw their names on the call sheet, I was, yeah, you know, I, I was trying not to get in my head and, and be nervous about it. But it ended up being so fun. And I think what I've just learned is that it starts from the top, you know, the vibe on set. So if, if those people are having a good time and if the filmmaker is not stressed out and running around and freaking you out, then everybody, it trickles down and everybody's having a nice time. So, you know, I, I made some friends there. I, I just tried to enjoy it. And then we ended up turning, based off the show, turning it into a series that got picked up by Amazon, which, you know, is a really silly, goofy college comedy show. And... <laughs> That's been fun just because I know a lot of the people, we've all become friends and it's always just a blessing to work no matter what. So it, it's definitely, I would say you learn a lot more on set than you will in any class <laughs> Yeah, <well, laughs> because you're actually in it. Yeah. And you're learning yeah. as you go. Yeah. That's, I totally agree with that. Like, do you have a one day you look up to in the industry as like an actor or writer or, or like a host of like your own podcast? Oh, so many people, so many people, you know, Meryl Streep is the number one, I think for everybody, she's yeah. been incredible talent. And I love how she really creates such memorable characters and even works with the same wig person. And 
costume people to really make sure she's like involved in every aspect of creating, which is obviously so admirable. Mm -hmm. I guess as a podcaster, I love Armchair Expert with Dax Shepard. Have you heard that? Um, I'm not sure. I have to check it out. I never heard of it. Yeah, yeah he's he has a great podcast, um, Dax Shepard. He's an actor and he does it with his friend Monica and they have so many amazing guests and they really just dive deep into their lives, which is one of my favorite podcasts to listen to. But I, I could go on and on. I mean, I have so many people. Every time I see a new movie or TV show, there's always at least one person in it who inspires me that I want to start following, you know? Yeah, I'm the same exact way. <laughs> I, yeah. Like, I like so many people that, like, my parents are like, everyone's your favorite to you. Everyone that you see is a favorite <laughs> to you. And that's yeah. how much I like. I love so many people. They're like, everyone's a favorite to you, Kylie. They're... Yeah, you can't say everyone's your favorite. You yeah. Them. I am like... No, that's awesome. But I was like, I like... I think you can. Yeah, I was like... I yeah, like, we have enough... It. We have enough room in our heart for everybody, you know? I, we, there's yeah. such an emphasis on pick one, but it's like, no, we can love so many people. So I think it's cool that everybody's your favorite. Yeah, everyone's like my favorite. First person I see, I'm like, no, it doesn't matter what movie or show, I'm like, I like this a lot. Like this person really hits on me, especially the yeah, every role. Yeah, like a movie of shot. I'm like, I like this person right now. This is <laughs> like, I don't know. This hits me a bunch of times, and my mom's like, "Are you kidding right now, Kylie? You like everybody?" I'm like, <laughs> that, "That's how I kind of have a role, I guess. I don't know." <laughs> yeah, that's a nice quality. It's a good quality to like everybody. Yeah, one hundred percent. But if you could work with, if like if you could work or any interview anyone in the industry, who would it be? Can I say Dolly Parton again or Meryl Streep again? <laughs> yeah, you can say them. <laughs> They're def those two definitely. I would be honored to interview. I think what I love most about Dolly Parton is that she makes everybody feel so happy and special, and gives her time, which I think is. The greatest act of love is giving your time to somebody else. And she does that for so many people. And then on top of that, is talented and has made so many iconic songs and movies and a million different things. And then on top of that, she gives back. You know, yeah. she's the part of the reason we have this vaccine. So I just think she is the ultimate example of someone I would love to be in the arts, which is someone who does what they love and knows they're doing what they love so they appreciate it and they're grateful and they're able to give back to other people and, and try to inspire them or just make the world a better place oh wonderful and like i think there's like a documentary on netflix about dolly part and i i'm that's how I yeah there is <laughs> yeah i think like i, I think it's still on netflix i want to watch it and there's never had a time yet but i heard i see the preview i'm like this is pretty good like the, i see everything on the news about dolly yeah. and she i think like so like she is like, she doesn't have to do this, but she chooses to, which I just love. Like, she has yeah. busy writing, songwriting, everything she does, and then she chooses to do help you with the vaccine and all those stuff. I'm like, how does she manage to do all that? <laughs> which is crazy. I know. Like, I can't. This is too much. Yeah. And she has a theme park and businesses, but she really does. She knows what's important, I think. So she she puts her time into that. You should definitely watch the documentary. It was good. It, it gives you a nice overview of her life because she was really poor. She had 12 siblings or she was one of 12 and they lived in this tiny cabin with, I think maybe one bedroom. I don't want to make that up, but we went to Dollywood and, and there's a replica of it. You can see it. And she came from such humble upbringings and, you know, just gives back in so many ways now. I, I think it's um, an amazing story and she's definitely somebody to look up to if you don't know who she is. <laughs> I don't, uh, what rock are you living under? I don't know, but Dolly Parton is the best. <laughs> yeah, wonder percent. You guys you need to check her out. He's like, she, <laughs> I totally recommend. But um, the final question for the interview is: What is some advice for people who would love to be in the same position as you in the industry? Oh wow! I think it's so interesting to think. Of. Yeah, I mean that that is a great question. I would say one of the hardest things to do in life, but the most important and most rewarding is to just be yourself, be your authentic self. As actors, we love being other people 
And so I think we're always looking for the character. Even when we go in for an audition, on top of that, I think we look for the character of who is the actor that the casting director wants to hire and what do they want yeah. to see in the character. But at the end of the day, what I've really learned, especially the way the industry has gone, because, you know, old Hollywood movies were so dramatic and that was a totally different style of acting. Now people really just want to see who you are. They want to see you be yourself because they'll remember you and you'll you'll make a connection with somebody. And I think that's what it's all about is making a connection with somebody by being yourself. Because even though you might not get the part, maybe over the years they'll call you into audition and then eventually there will be a part that's right for you and who you are. So don't try and like bend yourself into something that you think people want. Because at the end of the day, you're just going to be stressed and maybe it'll work. You know, they say fake it till you make it on some occasions. But yeah. overall, you know, I think if you can just be yourself and comfortable with who you are, you'll have a lot less anxiety and you'll be able to enter every room and just not really care what other people think because you know who you are and you know what you can bring to the table. No, 100%. Like, I totally agree with that. And like, I used to be obsessed with what people thought about me. Like, you used to be obsessed. And after I grew older, like, basically, like, we used to get to me all the hate bullying and all that used to get to me. Like I always thought myself, like, should I change the way I am or the podcast? Maybe people say this. I'm like, then after a while thinking about it, I'm like, don't change in what you if if they want this change, that's fine, their opinion, but you shouldn't change about yourself or the podcast. He's like, you're amazing, perfect the way you are. Don't let people like change you and like you have your types of friends like your type of group of friends they hang out with but then there's uh, other side there's like like people that don't like you people that like to hate on you and for no reason like that's the reason like that's the thing I really hate about living in this world is like hating but it's always been kind of that way hating bullying all that's always been yeah. like, that's kind of the world we live in right now so like that's really the hardest part about social media and kind of living like the generation we're living in yeah yeah that's really hard and you know younger people like you who are growing up with all these social media apps you know there was when i was in high school there were some but it wasn't as crazy as it is now so i feel for you guys but i'm glad you realized that it's just important to be yourself because the people that are hurting you it's not about you it's about them you mm -hmm. know they're hurting you and saying these things because they're not happy with themselves and so it's easier for them to lash out. And so I think it's so hard, but if you put your energy into the people that give you love and the positive people, that's all that matters. But it's it's really hard, you know? You can get a million nice comments and then one comment that's kind of rude or just not what you wanted to hear. And that's the one you focus on for some reason. I think it's just the human brain, but sort of like training yourself to not not care and, and move on is... is really important so and i think you're awesome and what you're doing is awesome so haters gonna hate bye felicia we don't need those yeah, people seriously <laughs> yes yeah, that's what yeah. i say that's exactly what i say uh, sometimes i'm like so, so let's go to the other side of ways we don't we don't want to be with you right now like don't worry yeah we have compassion for them you know i i feel badly that they have to act that way because obviously something's going on in their life so yeah, it, it, it is, it's good to put your blinders on when you see those people and just focus on what makes you happy and brings you joy. Exactly. I totally agree. And I just want to thank you so much for coming on my podcast. It means so much. And I enjoy talking to you. It's so fun talking to you. And we'll definitely speak soon. We'll plan something. And yeah, I'm so happy I got to speak with you. It's a pleasure speaking with you. Oh, thank you so much for having me. I always just ramble, but I loved your questions. And, and again, I just really think it's awesome that you're doing this. So thank you. I can't wait to listen to you. I'll probably mute it when I hear my own voice come on. And this was this was really great. Oh, thank you so much. It's a pleasure. And yeah, I'll like send you the episode once it comes out. And yeah, thank you so much for coming on. Oh, of course. Have a good mm -hmm. rest of your day. You too. Have a good one.